Hello everyone! In this video, I'm going to give you a guide to tessellations. In other words, a tessel lesson. I'll work with the example of Ilan Garibi's bricks and a variation I did, which I'll call Big Bricks, because if you turn this model around, you'll see these bricks here, and they're a bit bigger than the ones in Ilan Garibi's original bricks. I'll be giving lots of background information, so let's start with a paper choice. This paper is Tant. It's um, really nice for folding tessellations and some other models too. I also appreciate using elephant hide and sometimes translucent paper like uh, pergamine or glassine for tessellations. Now, in this video, I'm going to be using very normal kami, very normal origami paper, pretty lightweight, not a lot of stiffness to it, and I really do not recommend it for tessellations. But I know that some of you may not have access to different kinds of paper, so I thought going with something very basic was a good idea, and I always like having a duo effect. So Tant is available in many colors. I've got a pack with a hundred different colors and you should really give it a try. It's widely accessible, much more widely accessible than elephant hide and as you can see makes beautiful folds. So I'll go into how to fold these models but um, more essentially how when you're given one molecule, which is just one of these areas, and how to assemble them to get many on one sheet of paper. So let's first look at one of these molecules. You'll see that this looks kind of like this small area. And I'm just going to take this apart and unfold it. You may notice that this is folded on a square grid with seven divisions. The crease pattern works on that grid, plus a couple of diagonal creases. So you can see that here there are mountain folds, and I've indicated all of them in red. And then there's a couple of valley folds, which I've indicated in blue. So this crease pattern, if you fold them, you can then collapse this model. So you can see it kind of goes together. I actually like collapsing it from the colored side so that I pinch these two mountain folds together because from the color side these are now mountain folds. And same thing on the other side and then this just twists together as soon as you have all the creases in place. Sometimes you'll have to ensure that the creases are in the right direction. So one tip I'm going to give you is if you want to have very nice precision and you're having a hard time getting the paper to behave like you want to when doing the creases, you can pre-crease them a bit with a ruler and a bone folder. So usually what I do is just fold this in the air, just bend the paper and then go along where you want to make that crease. Depending on which paper you're using, it might be hard to ensure that the crease does not extend and that it isn't crooked. So what you can do is you can weaken the paper just in that spot and then the crease is going to go right along there. So I'm just aligning with the crease line I want to make. Taking a bone folder, you can use a knitting needle if you don't have a bone folder or an empty pen if you like. Anything that has kind of a pointy edge that you can run along where you want the crease to go. And I only do this on <laughs> off-grid creases because, as I briefly mentioned before, this is on a square grid. If you, you can probably see there are creases here which just go along the grid. This is a 7x7 seven seven grid. So once I've kind of pre-creased with the bone folder. I can now go in and the paper is pretty much automatically going to want to go along that weakening of the paper I just did. I like doing this for display models and especially for more complex patterns. For this tessellation it might be a bit of an overkill but I thought I'd share this tip with you. 
So now you've got these quite precise off-grid creases. By the way, I've got a 7x7 seven seven grid and I creased this by folding an 8x8 eight eight grid, which you can do by continuously folding in half and then cutting off one strip on each side. So now that we've got these creases in place, we can also go ahead and crease the valley folds. Uh, they're kind of already there because they're on the grid but we want to ensure that they're in the right direction to make the collapsing part super easy. And I'll not worry about these parts here right now. So now that I've done these creases, I'm just going to flip it over and as before pinch together. The first time around it's going to be a bit harder than after that. Pinch together, ensure that these folds go inside and then push together. Need to go down and then you'll see that this uh, mountain fold here will go along this edge of that central square and then that edge of the central square. So you can see this moving, that's the first time and then that's the second time. This is true for all four sides. So then you get this shape and now you will see that this is a bit messy because we didn't make mountain folds where I indicated. I'm just going to press that into shape now. You could also do this right in the beginning, but I find it's not as important. So this is one basic molecule, which indeed is the molecule for my big bricks rather than Ilan Garibi's bricks. And you will see that this kind of unfolds a bit. So when you're doing this on a bigger sheet of paper with, with many molecules, what I do is I use a binder clips to secure this. So just take these two um, layers and connect them with a binder clip. You can use something different too. Some people use small uh, wooden cloth pins, I think they're called. And they prefer that because these are quite harsh, you know, they're very strong. But I, I actually like that they're strong. Paper clips um, are probably going to leave marks on the paper, so I don't recommend them that much. But you can kind of give it a try. So I'm just going to remove these again. But we'll need them later. So let's have a look at the differences between this molecule and the one for bricks. You'll see that when we unfold this again, that this is a quite symmetrical shape. We have a central square and then from the corners, each of these four corners, there's a diagonal crease that goes along two grid squares. And this is true on all four sides. It's symmetrical. And then these valley folds, again, they all work in the same way. So that when you turn this by 90 degrees, it's the same pattern each time. Now, if we take one by Ilan Garibi for the bricks, then you'll see this actually isn't the case anymore because this looks quite different, right? This is a molecule that's on a 6 by 6 grid. So we don't actually have a central square, it's off-center. But if we put these on top of each other, then you'll see that they're essentially the same, except that one strip was cut off on each side. And we'll see in a second how that works. Because we want to end in, in this uh, model which assembles many different molecules in one sheet. And if we want to do that, I'm just going to quickly go back into collapsing that. So if we want to do that, I'm just going to take four and I'm going to tell you something about these pink ones in a second. I'm just going to take four and I'm going to connect them by just simulating it, by just putting them next to each other. 
like this. So you can see that uh, with the molecules for my big bricks, you've kind of now achieved this small area, for example. See these two long creases are where those molecules are connected. Now, in Ilan Garibi's molecule for bricks, basically you're using molecules that are a bit smaller. So I'm just putting these together more closely, kind of overlaying them. And now you can see that here, this is one area with four, that's exactly what you've achieved. So if you overlay these, that means you don't need some paper. And that's why you cut off exactly two strips, so you get a six by six molecule. Now, if you've, if you've paid close attention, you will have seen that these two molecules are a bit different. In essence, they're a mirror image. And we need the mirror image to connect these molecules because when you look at connecting molecules, you need to check that they align. And if you look at the crease patterns of these um, two different molecules, you'll see that the crease here aligns, the crease here aligns, and the crease here aligns. On the other hand, if you take two molecules that have the exact same crease pattern, and you put them next to each other, you'll see that the creases don't align. And you might be tempted to then say, well, let's shift it. But if you try to do that, you'll quickly realize that this doesn't work in assembling one big full crease pattern, which leads me to the next point of which properties such a molecule has to fulfill to be able to be tessellated. So there are some interesting properties about this molecule and also, of course, the one for bricks itself. So one is that it's on a regular shape. So the paper we start off with is regular. This is a square, so that works well. But of course you could imagine having a rectangle or you could have, um, for example, a hexagon. But it has to be a shape that um, when you put many of them next to each other, you can fill the whole space. Because in the end, when you take many molecules and you combine them, it's like um, taking tape and connecting the sheets. So the second one is, if you actually want to tape together the edges, that means that the edges need to lie on the outside of the molecule. So if we collapse this molecule again, you will see that the edge of the paper all around is on the edge of the collapsed molecule. So that then, if you actually want to connect two molecules, you could just take some tape and run it around. So what does this mean in terms of crease patterns? This indeed just means that um, you want to connect creases. You want all of the creases to match up. And this is also true when you take the BRICS molecule by Ilan Garibi. So this is one and this is the other. And now I just have to check that I align them correctly. And they match up like this. So you can see here that we don't really have a crease line here, but we can easily add one on the edge between two molecules. More importantly though, these two creases match up and these two match up. So in general, if you have a, a crease pattern on, um, on a square grid and the creases match up on this side, on the opposite sides, I should say, then you can just assemble them next to each other. But if they're different, if you just take the mirror image, 
then they fit together afterward. Obviously because this side <laughs> is then on the other side. And if you then assemble four, then you will indeed have the property that every crease on this side is exactly at the same height on the other side. And if you do it this way round, again, that's true too. In, in this case, it's symmetrical, so it's quite obvious, but it is true in general. Note that for this, of course, from this side to the next, you'd have to mirror image in this direction. Going to this side, you'd have to mirror image in that direction. Okay, so what next? I guess we can move on to folding one of these big tessellations. So I've pre-folded a grid with 24 divisions and I, I guess I should tell you about what kind of grid you need for these tessellations depending on the, the molecule size. So this is 7 by 7. So if I want to assemble many molecules, I need uh, 7 grid squares in each direction. So if I got a 24 grid, I can uh, do three of these molecules in each direction, which would give me nine molecules because, well, seven times three is 21 and you can't fit any more in 24. For the smaller one, uh, which is on a six by six grid, I could indeed put four next to each other because four times six is 24 and that just about matches. Once you've sorted out what kind of grid you want to fold, you have to fold it, of course. There's different ways on how to do this. So one method, which I already kind of told you about, is I wanted a 7x7 seven seven grid. So what I did is I folded an 8x8 eight eight grid, which is very easy to fold, and then cut one strip off. So you could, if you liked, um, for a 24 grid, fold a 32 grid, and then just cut eight strips off on each side. Or um, what you can also do is uh, you can fold thirds and then on each of the thirds you fold eighths. Because this way around you only have to fold thirds once, which is a bit harder, and then the eighths should be easy on each of the thirds. Any power of two division is easy to fold because you just have to continuously fold in half. So now that we've got this, we kind of want to know where to put each of these molecules. And I'm going to go with the big bricks tessellation, I think. And what I'm going to do is that we have these central squares. And I'm just going to mark these central squares with some masking tape so that we can remember <laughs> where the molecules go. This is better than drawing on the paper because it's going to damage the paper, it's going to be visible, and even if you use pencil and you erase it, the paper is going to be damaged. Ilan Garibi, who told me so much about all of these things and made me think about um, tessellations in a much different way, and who, who kind of um, motivated this video and who, who, who taught me a lot about what I'm, I'm telling you right now. Ilan Garibi, um, he uses blue tag. Uh, I don't have blue tag here, but that's another option. So I've got a 24 grid and I only want to use 21 grid squares. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to ignore two of the grid squares on this length and one on that length. And I'm just going to mark for clarity where that grid actually lies. I wouldn't do this normally, but I think for the video it's good to draw on some things. So I need a 21 grid. I left off two on one side and one on the other. So 24 minus three makes 21. We're good to go. Now we're going to mark the centers of the molecules. Um, each molecule is seven by seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven and the, um, the central square is in the center. So I go in four and then go, I go up four and there's the center. Um, just seeing that you can't really see the masking tape a lot. So I'm going to draw on the masking tape, which I guess <laughs> is okay because it won't damage the paper. And then when you want to check the next one, you'll see that from the central square, you have to move over three grid squares another th three on the other side, so we're going to leave exactly six space. One, two, three, four, five, six. And same in the other direction. And then just proceed to fill the whole space. 
Now that we've marked all of the central squares, we also have to check which of the crease patterns we have to use, this one or this one. Now, for the first one, it doesn't really matter. So I'm just going to take um, one method, which is going to be, I guess, either it turning clockwise or it turning counterclockwise. And then we just have to ensure that we mirror image the correct way after that. So I am going to draw this in because it is a video after all. You can see this uh, square, the central square. So I'm just going to draw in those off-grid creases. And it's a very simple molecule, so it shouldn't be too hard. And then when you go to the next one, you have to rotate in the other direction so that in the end all the creases line up. And then the next one is again turning this way around clockwise. And you just proceed all the way around. I am going to draw them all in just because I want to show you how I pre-crease this. So there we go, we've all got all the off-grid creases and I guess we could also draw in the other creases, but I think it might get a bit too confusing. So the interesting thing about this is that these creases are on the same line. Can you see this? This is a 45 degree angle. So rather than always creasing these small ones and handling the paper a lot, it's much easier to make all of these creases at once. And basically what you can do is you can count out how many diagonals you should crease and then how many you should leave off. So for example here you crease along two diagonals, then you count one, two, three, four, five, and then you crease again, and then again one, two, three, four, five left out, and then you crease again. And this is going to be true for all of these. So what I'd do is I'd kind of bring this paper in the right shape, and then I crease, then count one, two, three, four, five. Of course, I've got it drawn in so the counting isn't as necessary. And then crease again. And same on the other one. And you can do that all the way around. Now this saves the work of getting this paper kind of in this shape and then creasing. Uh, you can also, as I showed you before, kind of pre-score these, but um, let's not do that for now. And then proceed with the whole grid. So once you've pre-creased all of the diagonal creases, we can start collapsing. I haven't pre-creased all of the on-grid um, creases because I think we will be okay without those. So I've just turned this around because I told you I like collapsing from the other side. And what I'm basically going to do is I'm just going to try to collapse just this small section a bit to get the creases in the right direction. So as I told you before, I'm pinching these now mountain folds from this side. And this is kind of like doing the pre-creasing for the on-grid creases. And then you can kind of do that collapse just like on the small molecule, just to get the paper in about the right shape. And then you do that with each of these small molecules. Now once you've got one row done, you could actually collapse this all the way. But I prefer doing the twists all around and then we can uh, start collapsing all of them because once the model is collapsed a bit, it's harder to work on the rest of the paper. So now we've done all the mountain folds that are quite important. The ones in the center, which are 
the ones right here on the edges, I haven't done yet. Those are going to form the, the bricks and we, we can do those in the end just as before. So now what we'll do is we'll just collapse always one row. So I'm just going to collapse one of these columns, I guess. And collapse them all the way. Now I'd used the um, uh, binder clips before already and I'm going to use them now to secure the model more which makes it less messy. Just like before I kind of put them right at the end of that mountain fold area and I can do that on each of the sides. So now one column is basically collapsed and we can move on to the next one. Um, doing it this way is especially um, <laughs> a good idea if you are working on a very big grid. This is still, you know, moderate, I'd say. And if you want, you can also clip in the center. Although it's not going to be as stable because you can't quite reach to the bottom. But what you can do is again clip on the side and it will uh, help stabilize the model in the center too. So you can see it coming together and then move on to the next column. Just always ensuring that all of the valley folds are popped inside so that the collapsing works nicely. So now that you've basically got it collapsed, we just want to tidy up. So you can see turning around that you can kind of see the bricks, but they're quite messy. And once they're not messy anymore, it's going to be much more robust. So what we can do is just push these into place, just pushing from the back to get it to go along the grid. And it's much easier to look at it from this side. And this is like before I was making these creases in the end or making them strong. And that's kind of what I'm doing now too, just also in the center of the model. And sometimes um, what is also useful is to take something thinner than your fingers and then go inside to kind of get those creases to go in the right places even when your fingers might be a bit too big. This is especially true if you work on smaller sizes. And then you can see this has collapsed much better now already. You can ensure that these squares, these central squares are twisted nicely and fiddle around with the model a bit more. But as you can see, we folded my variation of um, Ilan Garibi's bricks, uh, the big bricks. This is the big version, this is the small version. And hopefully on the way you've learned a bit about tessellating and making a molecule or at least taking a molecule and then assembling it to many others. Just a couple of notes. You saw that we talked about aligning creases. So how about you try to vary this molecule a bit and try to assemble it or maybe even take different molecules, quite different, not just a mirror image, and assemble those just by looking at the constraint of the creases being in the same location when you connect them. So I hope you enjoyed this video which gave you a bit more background information rather than just showing you how to fold something. Do let me know what you think and happy folding!